Okay, Debbie, uh, this is just a quick uh, Camtasia Studio uh, video recording. Um, so this ought to give you a good visual on what I do with uh, some of my post-processing on my images. Um, so onto your morning glory shot here. I think it's a great shot. It's uh, very clear, very good detail. I just immediately noticed that this, that this photo, I think, can really pop with a few extra steps that I usually perform on a lot of my photos in Photoshop. So uh, without further ado, let's bring up Photoshop. I downloaded your file. It's not a high-res file, so some of the data, um, it, won't, it won't turn out as good as if I had uh, a full data file. Um, but at least you get the point here. So I load up Photoshop. First thing I do with the background is I duplicate it by dragging it onto the new layer. Make a duplicate background. Then I create a layer mask. I don't want to go into details on layer mask if, if hopefully you know where you use some layer mask, but they're very powerful uh, and not hard to learn. Uh, so I select the actual photo on that layer. I go to a filter and DCE tools redynamics. It's in that post um, in my tutorial, uh, their website. So I highly recommend this, uh, the, this uh, filter. It's an HDR filter, but it's very powerful because you can tune it down and you don't get any HDR effect at all. Of course, this is the default, uh, very noisy, very grainy. I take the surface smoothness up to about 93. Then I go to dramatic light strength to about one third level. Then I go to dramatic light radius to about one quarter level. Vivid colors, I usually pump up to about 13 or 14. We'll do 15 in your case. Brightness, I have to tone down a lot of the time uh, to about uh, 8 to 9, or uh, 8.9. Go ahead and process that. Okay, it really popped the photo. The thing about this uh, this filter, though, is it adds a lot of noise, a lot of grain. Uh, so uh, that being said, what I do th then is I select my mask and a paintbrush, and I paint away that filter for the background, and it brings back your original quality or original noise level, which is much less than what the filter applied, and leave the subject alone which you can't see because there's so so much detail on the subject um, that the grain actually gives it detail, so that's okay. So I'm going to do this really quick, all right? Um, uh, spend a lot more time going around, around the flower, but you don't have to if you use a soft brush. I'm using uh, hardness 0%. Okay, next thing I do is I duplicate that layer. I use a shortcut, Control alt shift e that duplicates the layer next thing i do is i pull down my filter again go to sharpen and i can do an unsharp mask radius of about one two if it's a very large image resolution wise i can go up to three sometimes uh, amount 37 percent and i go okay for that unsharp mask sharpened it some last filter i do before saving it is noise ninja by picture code my personal opinion, the best noise reduction filter for Photoshop, period. Uh, I just use the default. It's got a nice profiling uh, algorithm in the default settings. So let, us, let it do its magic there. That's done. Um, I highly recommend looking at the before and after um, in that tool preview for Noise Ninja. It really does a great job. Last thing, file. I'm going to save as uh, full quality JPEG. I'll upload this and I'll put it into uh, onto my site and host it and show you the uh, show you the copy. I'll call it Lexi Flower and we're done. So Debbie, um, I hope this helps you out. Um, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to just ask them in the uh, post and I'll try to help you out. Again, reference that post, my tutorial, and that should help you out. Thanks. Bye.